Tonight, I'm pretty excited because I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to do for almost a year now, and that is compare the output of the Nexstar 6SE telescope to the C9.25 telescope. There's a huge difference in mirror size here, even though it's only six inches versus nine and a quarter inches diameter. The total area, the surface area that is exposed to the sky is about 2.4 X for the C9.25. So almost two and a half times bigger. And when I got the telescope and when I brought it out for the first night, I thought, perhaps foolishly, that that meant that the image that I would see in my camera would be about two and a half times bigger. And to be honest with you, I was kind of disappointed when I first saw an image through the C9.25 because it didn't look all that much bigger. Come to find out that it's not the mirror area that dictates image size on your camera, but it is actually the focal length. And so the focal length on the six inch is 1500 millimeters. And on the C9.25, it's about 2350, or it is 200, 2350 millimeters. So that's about 1.57 or, you know, roughly 1.6 difference. So the image size is only going to be about 1.6 different. And we're gonna measure that tonight and just confirm that. Also the way the theory goes, since it is a larger mirror, there's more photons collected. Uh, the signal to rate noise ratio is higher and the images should be less grainy, even if they're not all that much bigger, they should be uh, less noisy in the larger telescope. So I'm gonna tonight look at Jupiter through both telescopes. On both of them, I'm gonna kind of abandon the next star mount and I'm just going to put the 6SE onto the AGT mount so that I don't have to manage uh, alignment and everything with two different mounts. So we're gonna put both of them on here. We're gonna go after Jupiter it, as, as fast as I can between the two so that there isn't a lot of difference in seeing, not a lot of difference in uh, altitude of Jupiter. And I'm gonna collect it exactly the same way, you know, same uh, number of frames uh, per image or per video collection. And I'm gonna process it the same way. And we're gonna do a like for like comparison between the Nexstar 6SE and the C9.25. Let's do it. So I spent the next three hours taking pictures, ended up taking about 30 pictures in total, uh, started with the 9.25. Uh, and here's here's the live view. At about 9.30 is when I started this. Uh, this is definitely what I would call below average seeing. Uh, it took about a dozen pictures with this scope over 20 minutes, then moved to the 6SE, uh, took another 12, 13 pictures. Uh, then I did move back to the 9.25 because by that time Jupiter was really high in the sky. I wanted to make sure I gave both telescopes a, a good opportunity at getting Jupiter uh, near uh, its peak altitude, which was 73 degrees at its peak. I looked at all the pictures, chose the best one, the best single example out of the 6SE and the 9.25. It ended up uh, this, this capture with the 6SE was taken at 1038. Uh, the altitude of Jupiter at the time was about 69 and a half degrees. And then uh, later on at 11.15, this was the best version of the 9.25. It was at about 72 and a half degrees. I processed the images with Autostackert and Registax. I'll show you those settings that I used uh, here just in case you're interested. All the captures were taken, uh, 2,000 pictures, and then I used Autostackert to just grab the, the top 50%, the top uh, 1,000 pictures. And here are those two final processed images, the 9.25s on the left and the uh, 6SE or the C6 is on the right. Uh, both of these are currently being displayed at 100% of their size. So this is accurate to the way that it came out of SharpCap uh, and came out of the telescope. Uh, right away, you can see that it just looks like the coloring is better on the C9.25. Again, I processed these exactly the same, so I would have expected the color to be a little bit more similar. These are just a little softer tones. Um, it just lo I, it looks a little bit more appealing to me. Obviously, the size is larger too. What I wanna do first here is measure the pixel size of each one of these to see how close we are to the 1.57 uh, that was promised by, I guess, the mathematics. So the, to do that, I'm going to zoom into each one of these so that they fill the screen so that I can get as accurate as possible uh, pixel measurement. Okay, so the 9.25 looks to be about, I could be able to get it exact, but it looks to be about 222 pixels. 
And then the 6SE looks to be about, I uh, don't want to get too much, about 152. So let's do that math. 222 divided by 152. So 1.46, so roughly 1.5, which is pretty similar to the way the math uh, predicted. It predicted a 1.57. Didn't quite make it to that 1.6 area, but 1.5 is pretty close. Uh, so that's a good assessment of what you should expect from a size difference between a six inch aperture uh, telescope versus a 9.25 on the Celestron SCTs. Now, the other thing I want to do while uh, we have this open is just kind of do a general assessment of the image quality of each of these. Again, the seeing wasn't good, so I don't expect anything really too sharp. Uh, but you can see on the six. So what I've done is I've zoomed these in so they're roughly the same size on the screen. So this one's at 400% and this one's at 300%. Uh, you can see, you can start to see on this one a little bit of pixelation, uh, which is expected because we're zoomed in quite a bit. Uh, but it's not obvious from a distance. Really the main difference you can see here between these two, this one being um, digitally zoomed in more, is this one is just a little bit fuzzier. Uh, it's a little bit more contrasty, if that's a word. And there's a little bit more color noise. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like there's some maybe reds and blues in here that shouldn't be there. This one is more a nice uh, shade of tan. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, uh, maybe on this line uh, or this band, this white band uh, at the bottom, and just kind of see how that uh, looks different between the two. Okay, so at 800% on the 6SE, you can hopefully you can definitely see that pixelation there. And then we'll go about the same here. Okay, so we'll expand that band across. Uh, here's where you can definitely see the difference. Um, this is pixelated, really fuzzy. Haven't hit the pixels yet here. This is roughly the same size, and uh, it's, it's just a lot softer um, color tones. Really, I think this is where the, the 9.25 really shines, is when you start zooming into some of these details. Uh, the it, it takes a lot longer um, to get to the pixelation, uh, perhaps obviously, um, than in a, a six inch aperture. This is pretty impressive uh, from the 9.25. I wish the scene was better. I wish that these were nice crisp pictures. Might have to do this again uh, on a better seeing night. Um, this was below average for sure. Now going back to looking at both of these side by side, I do want to bring up something um, that a lot of people uh, kind of struggle with, and that is when they're buying their first telescope, whether they want to get a 6SE or an 8SE. And really you can tell here that there isn't a staggering difference between the 9.25 and the 6, uh, even though the mirror size is a lot different. So when you think about that again, translate that to a from a 6 to an 8, obviously even less of a difference between those images. So it's not as big of a decision as you might uh, think. Um, you're not gonna get uh, you know, an, an order of magnitude better pictures out of an eight versus a six. The other thing I like about starting with a 6SE is you've got room to grow. You can jump to a 9.25 and see the difference. Whereas if you're going from an eight, uh, you, you're going to have to skip a 9.25. You're not going to be able to tell the difference very well. You're going to have to go from an 8 to an 11 to really see much of a difference. So this is, uh, you know, just more evidence for me that the, the 6SE was the way to start out. Really impressive, actually, on both of these telescopes uh, for uh, this type of seeing to be able to pull uh, the detail out of uh, Jupiter. Uh, pretty happy with the results. Like I said, we'll probably do something similar when we get better seeing. It's kind of few and far between here in Colorado that we get good seeing days, but uh, I'll keep hunting for them and I'll share it with you guys when I uh, get something in better seeing. Once again, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions on this or additional de detail from your own testing, uh, drop it in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave it a like and uh, subscribe if you want to see more like this. We'll see you next time.